Hi, this is Rachel with Good Behavior Beginnings, and I wanted to talk for a couple minutes about operational definitions. So in ABA, when we talk about operational definitions, we're talking about describing the behavior so that everyone knows what we're talking about, we're all on the same page, we can count the same behavior, we can respond correctly or respond the same way to the same behavior. This is our definition of what the behavior is. Now, you might wonder why we need to have a very specific definition um, if we can just use words like aggression or tantrum or backtalk. And the reason is, is that a lot of those terms can look different for different individuals or might have some subjective connotations. So if I said my learner is being rude, what's rude to me might not be the same thing as what's considered rude to you. So we want to make sure that we're all talking about the exact same behaviors. So the first step of an operational definition is to give that verb, that action, what is being said, what is being done. Being rude doesn't tell me what actually happened. It tells me how it's interpreted. But I could say that the learner rolled their eyes after I gave an instruction. That would be a verb describing what was seen, what was said, what was done instead of the um, impression that I got from it or the label that I might want to use to describe that action. So we start with the verb. The next thing is that in order to properly count behavior, we want to make sure that we include information about when the behavior starts and when the behavior stops. Now for some things, it makes uh, it's very clear to see the start and the stop of a behavior. If I want to say um, the learner is touching someone when they're not supposed to be, or you know, we're talking about that physical contact, physical contact starts <laughs> when the, the contact is made and stops when it's not, right? It's easy to tell, is this person touching or are they not touching? Right, so that would be a very clear start and a stop. But if we were working with a learner who engaged in very rapid occurrences of a behavior, for example, hitting their head, so hitting their head repeatedly, am I gonna try and count every single tap to the head, like every contact? Because if they do it really fast and they do it a lot, I'm probably not gonna get really accurate information. However, in that case, I might define in my operational definition head hitting as a head hitting episode that starts the first time contact is made and stops when no contact has been made for two seconds, right? I'm just making this up as an example, but that would be where we might write an episode. So then we would want to take data on probably the head hitting episodes. We might look at duration of head hitting episodes as opposed to trying to count frequency. Another example where having the start and the stop clearly defined is going to be when we're talking about something like engagement. We want our learner to be engaged or on task. Well, what does that look like? that might have a couple of things that have to happen at the same time. So the learner might need to be oriented towards the speaker and might need to have voice off <laughs> and hands on the appropriate materials, right? That could be the verbs that we use to describe it. We need to know when the start and the stop of engagement is so that we know when to count are they engaged or are they not engaged? Does it start when they orient, even if they're still playing with their phone under the desk? Or does it start when they are doing all three of those things? They're oriented, they have the appropriate materials and they're not talking. That's when the behavior starts. Then when does the behavior stop? Probably it's going to stop when the learner 
stops doing any one of those behaviors. So we need to define the stop and the start. That way we can accurately count frequency or duration or episodes that we are trying to measure and we're going to be um, accurate across observers. We're all gonna count it the same way. The other piece to operational definitions, I kind of grouped together. It's the where, when, and with whom. And this is going to qualify when, where, and under what circumstances, um, and who's it supposed to be with for behaviors that that matters. There are some behaviors that we are going to count under any circumstance. Things like aggression, maybe hitting someone or kicking someone. Anytime, any place, with any person, it still counts as aggression. However, there are other things that only count when they occur under certain circumstances. So if I want to teach greeting, responding to a greeting, let's say responding to a greeting, responding to a greeting is only appropriate and therefore only counts if someone greets you first. If I just walk around and I just say, hi, 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 all the time, regardless of if anyone said hi to me or if it's the first time I've seen them or anything, I'm just constantly saying hi. Those are not all appropriate greetings because there's a context that's gotta be involved, right? So you might have to define um, the proximity, how close they need to be to another person or how soon in time after something happens does this behavior have to occur. You also might need to define which people. So in our example of a greeting, if I'm initiating a greeting, it should occur when they are, you know, within earshot probably with a normal speaking voice. So, you know, they enter the room. Um, it should occur within a few seconds of them first entering the room. Um, otherwise, if I wait three minutes and then I say hi to you, that's not necessarily an appropriate greeting. Um, and it needs to be with someone that maybe you haven't greeted recently. So it might be okay to say hello to them the first time you see them that day, or maybe after an absence. So you see someone in the morning, you don't see them in the middle of the day, but then you see them again in the evening, it's appropriate to greet them again. However, if somebody walks in the door, you say hi, they step out and get something, they come back in 10 seconds later, it's probably not appropriate to say hi again. So you have to write in those qualifiers. What is the context where this skill is appropriately, appropriately used so that we can count correct and incorrect occurrences? There might also be some situations where you kind of have to write in the exceptions. So I used the example earlier of hitting that probably we're gonna count it anywhere, anytime, any place. However, you ever do a high five? Depending upon how you've defined this, that is physical contact from the palm of my hand onto another person's body part with a force such that it might make a noise, it might, um move their hand is that hitting probably that's not the hitting that we're targeting probably we are looking at um writing an exception so hitting is this it's this it's this it is not hand to hand you know if the other person's holding up their hand and a word has been said high five or the other person held up their hand to initiate so you might have to write in those qualifiers as well. So to recap, things that you need to include in a good, clear operational definition, you're gonna need the verb, which tells us exactly what's happening, what we can see the person doing or saying. You need to include stop and start so you can tell when the behavior is active and when it's not. And you need to define the context, the where, when, and with whom. I hope this helps when you're writing operational definitions. If you have other strategies or tips that help you, please feel free to share those in the comments.